Hey guys, um, it's Sunday the 22nd of March and um, I just wanted to fill you in on what I've been doing today. Um, it's a little chilly, but um, there's a lot of stuff that can still be started outside when it's still cold. So in my other video, I showed you this is full of radishes and in hindsight, maybe I shouldn't have started them all at, at once, but I did. So. We'll just be eating a lot of radishes and I'm actually okay with that because I love them. So, and um, it, when we get to that point, I will uh, start sharing some ways that I'm cooking and eating the radishes. Um, one of my kids likes them and the other one doesn't. So I'm kind of hoping that this whole thing of like eating what we have um, helps them both to be a little bit more adventurous, but we'll see. So this one back here, the back half is lettuce, two different types of lettuce, uh, leaf lettuce, which you can harvest it like pretty much once it's about one to two inches, the leaves, you can start um, pulling the leaves off and then they'll keep making more leaves as long as you don't pull the whole plant. The front half of this is going to be potatoes. I accidentally sprouted some potatoes in my pantry. so. I'm going to be using the largest ones of those for that. And then um, I have a couple grow bags, like this one here. Um, I'm gonna put some of the smaller ones in there. I actually use that bag to hold this fence closed so um, to keep the groundhog out. So once, um, yeah, I learned he can just fling bricks, it's fun. So once that starts really growing, I might have to use something else to keep this closed, but. I'll worry about that when I get there. I went out to Lowe's yesterday and picked up a few more bags of soil for this bed. And in reviewing my garden plan, I realized this whole half of my garden is going to be sitting empty until it's time to put tomatoes out, which is mid-May. So I set up this trellising system for some, um, I have these snow pea dwarf white sugar peas. So um, I tried to grow these last year at the um, food pantry garden and um, aphids got into them. I also started them really late because we didn't get soil until uh, I think it was the end of March. So I didn't start them as early as I could have. So I'm starting these now and I'm hoping that this gives them enough time to produce something for me. And then by the time they're pretty much done, I will be ready to put out my tomato plants. So what I did is I have these seven foot T posts left over from when I built my fence last year. And so what I did is I used twine and twine is stretchy, so it might not be the best option, but I didn't want to have to go to the store again and my options were twine or yarn so um, depending on how many seeds I have I might set up another one behind this and try yarn and just see which one holds up better um, now that I'm thinking about it the nylon yarn probably would have been a better choice but you know we live and we learn the the goal here is just to help them trellis up so that they're not on the ground so I'm going to set up my camera to try to catch what I'm doing so you guys can see. <clears throat> but what I did so far is I just kind of roughed up the soil. The soil on this side of the garden kind of sucks. So I just kind of roughed it up a little bit. Um, I didn't dig it. I'm not digging this year. Um, I dug around last year. I'm not doing it this year. So what I did is I roughed it up which kind of mixed some of that leaf mulch that I put down in the fall into the top layer. And then I just sprinkled a handful of the MI Gardener, it's called Trifecta Plus um, fertilizer, and then mixed it in a little bit. And then I just dug a furrow on either side of the twine and I'm dropping the seeds in about one every two, one and a half to two inches. Um, the fun thing with peas like this 
is you can start them, um, sew them really thickly, and you can actually eat the pea shoots when you thin them. So I'm not worried about them being too close together at this point. This package says to sow the seeds one and a half inches deep, spacing the rows 18 to 20 and 24 inches apart. Um, I'm ignoring that part. Tall varieties may be planted in double furrows six to 24 inches apart. So I did six inches apart, um, etc. So these germinate seven to 10 days. It's cold right now, so that might uh, affect it. So we'll just see. And then I will set up the camera so you can see what I'm doing with my potatoes as well. All right, so I'll see you in a few minutes. I'm not sure how good the sound is from over here. Um, so like I said, I'm just putting them in one to two inches, one, to, one and a half to two inches apart. And then um, I'm actually going to cover them with some of my raised bed soil um, slowly, slowly, I'm trying to improve the quality of this soil because it's pretty terrible. So that's one side, and then the other side, and it's looking like I will have enough to set up another row. I may wait a few days to stagger my plantings. Actually, I think that would be a good idea. So I'm going to wait a few days, maybe even wait until next weekend to, um, to start the other row so that I don't have a thousand peas all at once. It'll stagger it a little bit. All right, so that's that. I still have a lot left. I'm going to sew these a little more thickly. So that's done. Let's move on to the potatoes. Hey guys. Um, I can't quite figure out how to, where to put that camera so that you can see my face. Sorry about that. But I'm trying, I'm trying. I gotta meet the demands of my fans, right? So what I've already done in this bed is um, I sprinkled some of that trifecta plus over the whole thing. And um, so when I put the potatoes in, that'll just be getting worked in. Um, so based on my, my garden plan, I'm supposed to be able to put three in this space. But I don't really like that. <laughs> I don't really like that plan. Um, so basically, I'm gonna ignore it, and I am going to let's see, let's see how many I have. So you could cut these up. You could cut these up, and you would get um, even more potato starts. But I don't really need to do that. So I'm not gonna do that. Um, so many okay so this is like a little teeny tiny one I'm not gonna I'm just gonna compost that um, I'm gonna do that with a lot of these little tiny ones because I don't want little tiny potatoes I want good sized potatoes so looking through looking through these um, these sprouted potatoes I'm just gonna kind of put out the ones that I think <laughs> look at this one um, that I think are my best shot at a good yield and I'm gonna go with those um, let's see so like see how some of them have like a really nice start good one this one's on the smaller side but if you look at it it's a different um, type of potato it looks like it's purple 
So I'm going to go ahead and use that one, even though it's a smaller potato. I had a couple of those. And I might, those are the ones I might do in the, uh, the grow bag because they're smaller. So the ones I'm throwing over in the compost, they might actually make compost potatoes. But I just don't, I don't want to give space in my garden to them because they're just a little too, too runty. I don't want runty potatoes. There's a lot of little ones. A lot of little ones. Okay, let's see here. All right, so I've gotten rid of most of the really small ones. All right, so I'm left with, okay, these are gonna go in the grow bag. That's a, that's a nice plant, but it's not a very big potato. All right, so if we do, one here. Hmm. I'm going to ignore the garden plant, but I'm not sure how aggressive to be. So let's see here. Let me think this through. Um, I'm just going to put a pause on this and I'm going to go look something up really quickly. I'll be right back. Okay. So potatoes need to be spaced 12 inches apart. So the way that um, Luke from My Gardener does that, he does this thing called um, intensive garden, intense gardening, something like that. And so what he does is he spaces things so that they have the spacing between them on all sides. So if this is a four by four space and ha I have half of it to work with, that means that I've got two by four feet. So since I'm going to have okra on that side once the lettuce is done, I should be able to, hmm, yeah, that kind of leaves me with three, huh? All right, there's gotta be a better way to do this. All right, so if I do three on this side, like this, I do three over here like this, and then I do three over here like this, oops, like, like this. Should be all right, right? You know, the best way to find out is to try. Um, planting them like this, I might not get as many, but I'm kind of okay with that. Um, I've got a lot of, I wasn't actually even going to do potatoes this year, but I reworked my garden plan and I'm, I'm happy with um, the changes that I made. So um, I'm just going to go for it. All right, so this guy, so the way potatoes work is you can just plant them and then let them go that's perfectly fine. But you can also, once they start sprouting, cover them up. So putting the vines below ground, the ones that have sprouted already, shouldn't be a problem. All right, and then this one's gonna go here, and then those two little purple ones are gonna go in that other, in the grow bag. I didn't have huge success with the potatoes in the grow bag last year. Um, but I'm willing to try it for these two little runty, little, run, little runty guys. And I'm gonna put the rest of them over in the compost area and um, maybe, maybe dig a little trough for them and bury them over there. And if I get something from them, that's just a bonus. All right, thanks for, thanks for being out here with me. I'll see you guys later.